Temperature and weight are the universal languages of candle making. And in today's episode, I'm going to give you five reasons that you should always measure by weight, including four mistakes that beginners make when it comes to measuring supplies. Hello, my name is Kevin from Armitage Candle Company, the premier online resource for accelerating your candle making technique and business. And in today's episode, we're going to talk about weight. You know, when you first get into candle making, there's all these things flying at you. If you hang around any of the groups, or you watch any of the videos, there's so much information, so much disinformation. There's all these waxes, all these wicks, all these, you should do this, you should do that, all these decorative candles. And you're like, oh, where do I start? But there's one critical element that is foundational to everything we do in candle making to be successful. And that is understanding why weight is the most critical element of candle making measurements. It's easy to get tripped up with all these other things, but if you can understand weight and you can understand temperature, then you can pretty much navigate your way through almost any other part of the process. We're going to talk in this episode specifically about five different reasons that you always measure by weight. And then we'll talk about the four common mistakes that beginners make when it comes to measuring their supplies. Okay. So the first reason that you should always measure by weight is that wax is purchased by weight. You see, it's not very common to go to a candle making supply store and say, Hey, how many cubic yards of wax or how many liters of wax can I buy from you? No, all of them sell their wax by pound. And this really plays into freight. But if you're going to buy wax, you're usually buying one pound, five pound, 10 pound, 50 pounds, and maybe you're even buying a pallet's worth if you're really far along in your journey. But all the suppliers are going to sell you wax by weight. So if you decide to build your product design around volume, and I'm going to give you a lot of reasons not to, then you're going to be confused when you go to figure out how much volume do I need to buy these candles because they're telling me pounds. I need to know cubic yards. I need to know cubic feet. So really just stay out of the volume game altogether for that reason alone. But you go to a candle supplier, they're selling it by weight. That's reason number one. Now, the second reason that you want to measure by weight is that fragrance oil is also sold by weight. Let's say that you build this beautiful candle design and you know that it takes a certain amount of fragrance oil, but you measured out by volume. Then when you go to purchase a lot more supplies, you might not know exactly how that volume translates into a weight because they're speaking the language of weight and you might be speaking the language of volume. So there's going to be a disconnect there. And one of the biggest reasons that this really matters is the third point, which is that wax specifications are based on weight. The specifications are based on weight. If you look up the product sheet for a wax and you want to understand, well, how much fragrance oil can I fit into this thing? They're going to give you a percentage. We call that the fragrance load. And that fragrance load is a percentage based on weight, not based on volume. So I got a question the other day that said, I have 200 milliliters of wax. How much fragrance oil do I need? And I said, I don't know because, well, it depends on what wax you're using, but I don't start from the volume. When the wax says that it can hold 5% or 10%, they're saying it can hold that much of its own weight. And so if you had 100 grams, which is a measurement of weight, 100 grams of wax, it can hold 10%. That would be 10 grams of fragrance oil. Now, how much volume is that on both sides? I don't know. The language of wax specifications is a percentage by weight. If you're talking wax, you're talking weight. Percentage, always by weight. And so the fourth point is a little more practical and it really plays into this idea that it's just easier to measure by weight than it is by volume. If you were to measure by volume, you would need a scientific beaker or a measuring glass, something with measurements see through that you can see how high you filled it and you could see exactly where it is. And the problem with that is that a lot of those are somewhat guess and check. If you look at this picture of a beaker here, I filled it up with fragrance oil and I can kind of guess about where it is but it's really not that precise that and the meniscus or whatever it's called that dips down the middle might skew my results. There's a particular way you're supposed to read that, but the whole thing gets a little crazy and that's with a liquid. Now we could melt the wax down into a liquid form and pour it into a beaker and try to do it that way. That's a lot of hassle. Now the alternative is to measure by weight. Now with weight, we would use a scale, which is what I highly recommend. There's links to that in the shopping list below. But measuring by weight with a scale allows you to be somewhat precise with whatever form it's in solid or liquid. It's going to weigh the same in grams or ounces. 
<laughs> scales are super easy. You can put a liquid on it, you can put a solid on it, and it's all the same. You're speaking the same language across. There's no state change nonsense that you have to deal with. So for that reason alone, it's just easier to measure by weight. Not only that, if you were to measure by volume, wax is super hard in its solid form to figure out how much volume you have. Like think about it. With a block, you could cut out a perfect rectangular prism and try to measure length by width by height. Okay, that's kind of close. But think about how soy wax ships. Think about how some of these other waxes ship like uh, palm wax. And now we're talking about little pellets. We're talking about beads, flakes, whatever it is. Like what is the actual volume of those things? Now, that's a tricky question. So practically speaking, measuring by weight is just easier than measuring by volume. Now, the fifth and final reason that we measure by weight is really comes down to shipping. Now, shipping, just like with these larger supply companies, they care about their freight. Now, when you're shipping a candle, you typically need to know how much it weighs. Now, there are some flat rate exceptions, but if you're talking about the postal office or FedEx or UPS, oftentimes they'll ask you, what's the weight of your package? You need to know the dimensions and the weight. And freight is really important. And so, just for that reason alone, if you're measuring everything by volume, you're going to have to know the weight anyways if you want to ship the darn thing depending on what method you choose, but weight is the language there as well. Okay, we're about to wrap up, but I wanna give you four common mistakes that beginners make when it comes to measuring their supplies. The first is that you forget about these differences in density. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I said earlier that some fragrance oils are so different that they'll weigh the same and take up even more volume or less volume than another one. Like take these for instance. This is fruit slices, compared to mahogany teakwood, both from Candlewick. They both weigh 170 grams, and you can see there's a massive difference in how much space they take. This matters because 200 mils of one of these oils compared to 200 mils of the other oil are gonna weigh different. And that could definitely impact your candle design if you're counting on a specific amount of weight to be included in it. The second mistake I see beginners make is not using grams or ounces. Now, in the United States, your label actually has to have grams and ounces listed on it. So you're going to have to know the weight at the end of the day anyways. But if you're using anything weird to measure the weight, then really you got to stop. Get to grams or use ounces. Grams is typically my recommendation for starting out. It's a lot more precise without decimal points, whatever. Maybe use a preference. Grams, ounces, both of them are okay. Just be consistent on what you're using. Now, the third point is this people will use fluid ounces to measure weight. Now, the problem is fluid ounces doesn't measure weight. Fluid ounces is a volumetric measurement. It's exactly what you don't want to do. So if you're using fluid ounces, that's the F-L-O-Z. If you're using fluid ounces, get out of it. Change. Figure out how to use ounces instead. Figure out how to use grams because fluid ounces is not the same as ounces. Unless you're kind of talking about water a little bit, kind of. But let's ignore that. Okay, and the fourth and final mistake that I see beginners making is that they don't invest in a scale. Seriously, you guys, scales are cheap. They're so cheap, they're easy to get. I mean, we're talking less than 15 bucks and you can get something that's super appropriate for what you're doing. Now, I mentioned this in a previous episode, things that you need to have in your workshop and a scale is one of them. So I've left a link below or you can go check out that video if you want to see more about scales, but it's so easy. You get two scales if you really need to, one, for shipping and one for building your candles. I mean, it can be the same scale. You can have one, but you might want more capacity on the shipping one, depending on how crazy your business is going, but like totally up to you. So that's it. That's all I have. Those are the mistakes. Those are the ways we measure by weight. And I hope that some of this was helpful. I mean, if this is news to you, then welcome to the rest of the candle making world. These are critical elements of learning and honing this craft. If you found any of this helpful or useful or entertaining, whatever it is, please leave me a like. Otherwise, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments below and I will get to it as soon as I can. Otherwise, I hope you have a great week. I hope you make beautiful candles and I will see you in the next episode. Bye.